All right, guys, week five is upon us. This episode is going to be as complete as you can get to help you with who to start going into NFL week five. So I'm going to give you guys 15 must starts, but also it's going to be an open discussion here. Drop a comment below if you have a specific start and sit question. And I'm also going to be talking about other start situations. Now, I'm structured it a little bit differently now. I structured it so I'm going to do the must starts here on Thursday. I'm going to do the must sits, the guys that you may want to consider sitting on Friday. So it's going to be a two part instead of just doing starts and sits in one episode. It's clear. It's more concise this way. It's more accurate. So if you have a start and sit question, drop it below. I'll try to get to as many as I possibly can. But I want to focus on 15 must starts, but also have an open discussion on optimal players to start predicated on matchup, predicated on hand picked by myself to let you guys know if you're making the right starts and sits decisions. So Make sure you grab a coffee, grab a tea, sit back, relax. If you're driving, pay attention to the road. And also, listen, uh, let's talk about 15 must-starts for this week. Now, before I do, guys, Manscaped.com is the sponsor. If you've not got the underwear, guys, if you're not, if you're sitting right now in the car or at home and you're not wearing this underwear, you're missing out. Manscaped.com, Showerline 20. Go to the site. Showerline 20 is going to save yourself 20% on the Boxers 2.0. Try the underwear. Try the body wash. I can... I can smell myself. I smell fresh because I've been using the body wash and the shampoo. So go treat yourself. Manscaped.com. Shower Lion 20. Also, we've got a game tonight. Colts versus the Broncos. Head on over to mybookie.ag. Use code FFC. Create an account. And if you put in 250, they'll double your deposit. You get like 500 (laughs) to play with. So that's mybookie.ag. FFC is the code. Go enhance that game watching experience right now. we got a game tonight. Denver versus the Colts. And I believe Denver is a three and a half point favorite. I'm not going to tell you who I like, but if you guys know who's going to win, mybookie.ag, FFC, go create an account right now. All right, let's dive into the 15 must starts. We'll start off with quarterback. We'll move our way all the way to tight end. And let's deep dive into this. Now, there's some obvious picks here, okay? So if you have a, like a, a Pat Mahomes, don't even don't need to talk about him. If you have a Justin Herbert, don't need to talk about him. These guys are consistent. So if they're consistent, We don't really need to talk about them. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to bring in some names here that are not as consistent that you may need to stream or may have a backup or you may be dealing with an injury. So I'm going to bring up some names. Some of them are consistent, but like some of the obvious names I won't bring up. I mean, again, if you have Mahomes, he does have an easy matchup. You got to start him. You know, if you have Justin Herbert, mid-range matchup, you got to start him. So there's some common sense here, guys. Week five, you should have an idea of your team, who's being consistent, so you make sure you start and sit the right person. Guys, very important to make some common sense decisions, all right? But first guy here is Joe Burrow versus Baltimore. I got to tell you, I mean, he had a 20-point week last week. This week, great matchup versus Baltimore. Must start at the quarterback position. Again, it's going to be an open discussion, so drop a comment below. Love to get your feedback. Second guy here, Zach Wilson. Now, obviously coming back, People have some question marks about him. Do you start him? Now, he had a 21-point game last week. He is playing Miami. Second easiest matchup versus position. So if you're questioning Zach Wilson this week, definitely a must-start predicate on matchup. Very, very important, okay? Now, I get a lot of questions on Kenny Pickett. I'm going to talk about him more in the sit episode. He does have the toughest matchup versus position. He is playing Buffalo. Kenny Pickett coming out of the gate here last week. I think he had, what, one touchdown, one interception. Still put up like 50 in points. In fantasy, ton of ton of upside, and I think he's going to raise his players with him, with him, including Najee and all of his offensive weapons, including George Pickens. So I'm excited to see that. But he does have a tough matchup. I just want to let you guys know. Moving on to the running back position here, number three here, a must start is James Robinson playing Houston. He's ice cold after last week, three points. Look for a bounce back out of James Robinson this week. People are asking, do I start him? Yes, he had one bad week, guys. He had two. Uh, two or three good weeks prior to that. James Robinson is a must-start and arguably the best matchup versus position. Number four here, a lot of people asking about this, is uh, Khalil Herbert. Yes, must-start, fourth easiest matchup versus position. Khalil Herbert coming off an 11-point week. He had an easy matchup last week, didn't do the the greatest. But David Montgomery, if he sits, Khalil Herbert is a must-start. Even if David Montgomery is slated to start, which I don't think he is, he's been missing practice all week. Even if David Montgomery is a start, he may be limited. So Khalil Herbert is still a viable option in year long and DFS. Khalil Herbert, again, fourth easiest matchup versus position. Coming at number five here, a must start is Damian Pierce. A lot of people asking me about him. Obviously, must start playing Jacksonville. 
coming off some good weeks the past couple weeks. 29 points last week, coming alive, breaking out. This is what I like to see out of a guy I was talking about since May, and now people are talking about him. Uh, Damian Pierce, definite must start versus Jacksonville. Uh, Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara. Now, I'm told that Alvin Kamara is starting. Do we trust them? I'm not really crazy on these guys, but at the end of the day, pretty good matchup. So if you guys want Alvin Kamara, the second easiest matchup versus Seattle, a lot of people drafted him in year long, has not returned his investment. Hasn't even got a touchdown yet. Okay, zero points. I think he's played one or, one or two games. Hasn't returned his investment. Alvin Kamara, and the thing about Alvin Kamara that I stated is that he was on the decline, okay? Once you hit a pinnacle, right? Quick shot of water here. Once you hit a pinnacle, right, and you haven't done anything for a couple years, different offense from when you hit that pinnacle, you have question marks. And I had a lot of question marks. Alvin Kamara, he was facing a looming suspension, which, again, has not been a factor. So Alvin Kamara going in this week, he does have a good matchup. Him and Mark Ingram, you may want to consider starting them predicated on matchup, but be careful. Number seven here, Miles Sanders, okay, versus Arizona. Good matchup, and Miles Sanders has been relatively consistent, having a big week last week, 33 points. Now, understand, guys, sometimes when they have big weeks, the week after may not be big, right? There's only like a handful of players that are like super consistent, and Miles Sanders does actually have a good matchup this week versus Arizona. You may want to consider him, okay? Miles Sanders, Arizona, good matchup, start him. All right. Now, let's move on to get some wide receivers here. And again, tomorrow, I'm going to be doing some of the sits, talking about the tougher matchups. I want to break this into two so it's easier for you guys to digest. You know what I'm saying? All right, moving on to wide receivers. Again, there's some obvious names. You got to start them, okay? If they're obvious, start them, okay? If they're consistent, start them, all right? But I'm giving you guys some optimal players predicated on position, or maybe they had a bad week last week, or whatever the situation is, or they're not as obvious, Okay? And again, drop your questions below. I'll try to get to as many as I possibly can, all right? So, we talked about Robert Woods, number eight, my, uh, Robert, uh, sorry, talk about Miles Sanders, number eight, Robert Woods. Um, coming off a 13-point week last week, easy matchup versus position versus Washington. Great matchup, okay? So, Robert Woods, if you want to consider him. Traylon Burks, I think he's going to be banged up this week. I think he's got turf toe. Kyle Phillips may be an option as well. Could have a good game. Wasn't targeted much last week, but... May have a good week this week versus Washington. May want to consider those guys, all right? Number nine here, I just want to let you know this is more of an obvious one, uh, but T. Higgins and Jamar Chase definitely want to start them this week versus Baltimore. Great, you know, matchup versus position. Jamar Chase has been safe at best, has not been phenomenal. Does have a good matchup this week. Second easiest versus position versus Baltimore. We need to note that. Number 10 here, C.D. Lamb. I know he's more of an obvious one, but if you are considering him and Michael Gallup, I got to tell you, good matchup versus position versus the Rams this week. Coming off a 22-point game for C.D. Lamb, primed for another big week. So again, we get these ups and downs with players. With C.D. Lamb having an up last week, can remain up because he's got a good matchup, all right? Him, Michael Gallup, also good options, all right? Uh, number 11, Garrett Wilson versus Miami. Garrett Wilson seems to be the wide receiver one, okay? He has kind of taken over a little bit. Um, you know, we have Corey Davis having good games. They're spreading the ball around. Things are going to change now with Zach Wilson coming back. We're going to see who he's going to gravitate to. But Garrett Wilson, Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, all good matchups. But again, it's going to be very interesting to see who Zach Wilson is going to be gravitating more. It's going to take about two to three weeks to feel that out. I personally have no stock in any of these receivers. I do have Brees Hall, so I will, will be closely monitoring the situation, but Garrett Wilson has a good matchup. All right, number 12 here goes without saying, but we got to highlight it because there's other receivers on that offense, Gabe Davis included, who's coming off a two-point week. Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Buffalo wide receivers, good matchup versus Pittsburgh. Uh, look for a nice week out of them. Now, Stefan Diggs has had some mediocre weeks the past couple weeks, 10 points last week. Look for him to do better this week, all right? Amari Cooper versus the Chargers. Now, Amari coming off, uh, you know, here's the thing, right? Amari Cooper is a wide receiver one. but When he comes off a bad week, you start questioning, like, is he good? Is he going to do well? What's he going to do? And I got to tell you, this week could do well. 
Okay, Amari Cooper, again, a lot of people scared to start him. A lot of people scared of the Browns. But sometimes you got to aim high in the depth chart and be okay with it. Now, he is playing the Chargers coming off a two-point week last week. And understand, guys, he has got arguably, guys, the eighth easiest matchup versus position. So, Amari Cooper definitely want to consider grabbing or starting this week, even though he's coming off a bad week. Uh, 14 here, Waddle and Tyreek versus the Jets. Great matchup this week. I know Tyreek has kind of been hit or miss lately. Does have it in good this week, Mr. Tyreek Hill and Waddle. One of them is going to really boom this week. Not sure who. And uh, finally, Mike, and then we're going to talk a little bit about tight ends. Mike Evans and all of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have it in easy this week versus Atlanta. All right? So who are you going to go with? Mike Evans coming off a 33-point week. Got to start him. All right? Moving on to the tight end here, I'll give you a couple bonuses here. Uh, obviously, again, you're going to start your Travis Kelsey. You really are. Uh, there is going to be some question marks here. You know, Dallas Goddard, you know, he's been safe. He's got a good matchup. Albert O coming off a zero-point week. You know, he's got a good matchup. You know, again, tight ends, it's a crapshoot with Tampa Bay. Who's going to get the volume? Kate Auden. Is it Cameron Braid? I know he got banged up. Be careful, but they do have a good matchup. TJ Hawkinson, I got to tell you real quick, coming off a 43-point week. If Amon is back, look for a major decline from last week, but he does have a good matchup. And I just want to touch on real quickly here, since we're talking good matchup, good matchups here. This is a make or break week for Kyle Pitts. I mean, he's done absolutely nothing. He's played like absolute garbage. Hasn't even gotten a touchdown. Okay. He is playing Tampa Bay and arguably the fifth easiest matchup versus position. Kyle Pitts, make or break week, but green light. He does have a good matchup. I know a lot of people ask about him. And Tyler Coughlin, who's been safe the past couple weeks, also a good matchup, just so you guys know, versus Miami. All right. So. Those are your green lights, guys. Those are 15 players you must start and some of the teammates around them. And sometimes it could be that teammate or the other teammate, depending on who that quarterback's going to be gravitating to that week. Okay, this is why I say you can wait on wide receiver because even some of these top-end wide receivers, you know, aside from Cooper Cup, you know, it's kind of hit or miss. Cooper Cup's been super consistent, and I take full ownership on that one, you know. Um, very rarely does a player repeat this type of high performance. We saw with Jonathan Taylor, he's declining, as I predicted. But with Cooper Cup, he's different. But it's still early in the season. We'll, we'll see if there's possible decline. You can't just keep force-feeding somebody without the defense picking up. We saw the 49ers start picking up on Cooper Cup and pick him off. And then we saw targets going other ways as soon as uh, the defense caught pattern. It's like, hut, 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 pass to Cooper Cup. Hut, cut, pass to Cooper Cup. It's so obvious and ridiculously boring. Uh, for fantasy, it's good, but not so much for reality. I think they got to change it up. All right, guys, those are your starts for NFL Week 5. Drop your questions below. Head over to manscaped.com, shower line 20. Go treat yourself right now. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We go year-round. We'll talk soon.